I could have taken his life. You see, I was there on that day. What is it? More than 40 years ago now. And if I had not stopped myself, I would have taken his life. Now, I'm going to tell you the story. You ask me to tell it, and I will. But it's so strange. I've, I've been out for five years now, but I still cannot get used to these clothes. I wore the uniform for so long, for so many years, the uniform of the greatest military force in the history of the world, the Imperial Army of Rome. That's right. I was there in Bethlehem on that day as part of a security force. We had them everywhere because of the census that was being taken. Lots of people were traveling back to their hometowns. Bethlehem should be a quiet post, I thought. Not like, not like Jerusalem, just a few miles to the north. That's where the excitement would be. At least that's what I thought. So, when I heard those men come racing through the streets, shouting at the top of their voices as if they had just heard one of those rabble-rousing preachers, I was shocked. So much so that I followed them. They did not seem important. Peasants, perhaps shepherds. But they were so obsessed. Something was happening. And I had to make sure it did not become trouble. So I followed them to a place out behind a local inn. Not the usual spot for a riot, I know, but I was not taking any chances. I watched as they gathered around what looked to be a cave. And then, and then some of them fell on their knees, others threw their hands in the air. I, I thought, could one of their so-called messiahs be using this as a staging ground? I was young back then, but I knew enough to realize that my commanding officer would want anything like this stopped. And I also knew that because I was alone, surprise was my greatest weapon. So I charged into the group of stinking men with my short sword in front of me. I, I, I shoved them aside so that I could, I could see what was at the center of attention. But when I got there, I was not expecting what I saw. This cave was a place where animals were kept. And there in the midst of the animals, was a man, a very young woman, and there, just a few centimeters from the tip of my blade, was a baby. That's right. It was him. And if I had taken one more step I would have taken his life. I stepped back quickly, but I could still see the baby and his eyes. There was something about his eyes. I, I, I cannot explain it. It was as if, it was as if he knew me. His eyes looked deep into my being. I, I, I looked away quickly, but then I saw her, the young mother. Uh, she, she 
was just a teenager, and it was not her features that, that struck me. She could have been any other young girl, but there was something about her, a, a strength that I had never encountered before shown around her. I, I, I looked back at the baby, and then back at the mother. Frankly, I, I did not know what to say. I did not know what to do. So I left. But as I walked back through that group of men, somehow I knew that I would never forget that baby or his mother. Less than two years later, I was back in Bethlehem. King Herod had hired some of us, along with some of his own soldiers, as a, as a personal security force, and he paid us well. But there was not enough money to pay for what he asked us to do because of his paranoia about a prophecy that a new king of the Jews was to be born in Bethlehem and a conversation he had with uh, some visitors from the east. He ordered us to go to Bethlehem and kill every little boy two years and under. The horror in the faces of those parents as we ripped their little boys from their arms <laughs> has haunted me ever since. I didn't know one thing. I did not see that little boy and his mother I had encountered in that cave two years earlier. How did I know? because I was looking, hoping they would not be there. Because if they had, because of my orders, I would have taken his life. After it was all over, I uh, gathered my things together from Herod's palace and I returned to Rome. I did not even wait for my wages. Herod could keep his blood money. <sighs> for the next 30 years, I worked as a soldier. Eventually, I became a centurion. I now had men under me who obeyed my orders as I obeyed the orders of Rome. My men and I were eventually sent back to Israel, this time to the center of attention, Jerusalem itself. It seems Rome was constantly having problems with rebellions in the area, and my friend Pontius Pilate had been sent to govern it. My men and I went along. <laughs> 